If you shoot outdoors, you've probably taken a backlit photo with the subject looking like a black silhouette that needs to be corrected. If you have this problem, then stick around. In this video, we're going to be running through four duels of DxO Photo Lab 8 to fix backlit photos. At the end of the video, I'll tell you which one is the best, so let's get right into it. The first tool is using global adjustments with the Selective Tone Palette. According to DxO, this tool is a very intuitive and precise way to control and adjust the brightness of well-defined tonal ranges in an image. It has four sliders, highlights, this slider is designed to recover information and details in the brightest parts of the image, midtones, this slider acts on tones as represented in the central part of the histogram, shadows, this slider lets you brighten the shadows and dark areas in an image, blacks, this slider lets you set the black point in your image. Let's demonstrate its usage by brightening the trees in this image with just selective tone global adjustments. I'll use the shadows adjustment. As you can see, this adjustment does the job. The shadows adjustment is quite capable of bringing back detail and color in even very dark areas. On the other hand, you might notice some disadvantages. One issue is, if excessively used, global adjustments can make the overall image look over-processed with reduced contrast. To be fair, DxO does admit as much in its documentation and recommends these sliders be used in moderation to avoid unpleasant side effects. As such, I'll take care not to overdo the adjustment. Next, let's work on the washed out background. I'll mask the background using DxO Photolab 8's newly introduced Hue Range Mask. As you can see, with very little effort, a suitable mask has been created. I'll apply a clear view dehazing adjustment to make the colors pop. Here is another example. The second tool is Luminosity Mask. According to DxO, this tool allows you to correct an image based on a range of brightness that you can adjust with very high precision. Let's demonstrate the tool by fixing the underexposure in this image. From the Local Adjustments panel, I'll click on Luminosity Mask. I'll click a shadowy area. And just like that, with one click, DxO created a pretty precise mask. I'll use the shadow slider to brighten the shadows. While it is a pretty accurate mask, there are still some errors. As such, I'll refine the mask further with the Erase tool. Do note that Luminosity Mask can only be refined with Brush and Erase tool. Auto masking and control point is not supported. Next, I'll fix the washed out background. Once again, I'll use the Luminosity Mask to mask the background. I'll use the Clear View adjustment to enhance the washed out colors. There, a pretty good result. So what are the pros and cons of using the Luminosity Mask? In terms of pros, the main benefit is the ability to adjust shadows and highlights separately, which, if done correctly, will allow for natural-looking edits. In terms of cons, Luminosity Mask is not free. It can only be used upon purchase and activation of Film Pack, which costs $125. Here is another example of using the Luminosity Mask. The third tool is Control Line and Control Point. We've discussed these tools in a previous video, so I won't be going through this in detail. If interested, do watch my video on the topic. I'll leave a link in the description. But just as a quick summary, Control Points work similar to a radial mask and lets you make selective adjustments to areas defined by the Control Points radius. Control Lines use the same principles as Control Points, except that instead of a radial mask, control points work more like a graduated filter, covering the entire width of the image. To demonstrate, let's work on this image. From the Local Adjustments panel, I'll select Control Line. I'll move the eyedropper to point to a darker tone. As you can see, with just one step, a relatively precise mask has been created. On the other hand, the mask is not perfect, 
Looking closely, it is still spilling over the background. To improve the mask, I'll refine it with the built-in sliders. I'll reduce chroma to reduce reliance on color. And I'll increase luma to reduce the range of acceptable brightness levels. As you can see, these steps create a better fitting mask. Unfortunately though, there are still some errors. To fix it, I'll use negative control points. There, that's better. I'll brighten the shadows. Finally, I'll work on the highlights. So that was control point and control line. What are the pros and cons of using these tools to correct backlit images? In terms of pros, unlike luminosity mask, control point and control line is free and comes with Photolab. Also, better than luminosity mask, which can only be refined by a brush with no edge detection, control points and control line can be refined by other control points and control line which support edge detection. What about the cons? In terms of cons, you may have noticed that these tools usually will take more steps than using a luminosity mask. Here is another example of using control point and control line to correct a backlit image. The fourth tool is a built-in preset called HDR Backlight Correction. DxO characterizes HDR Backlight Correction as one which strongly lightens shadows under backlighting conditions while still preserving a natural look. To demonstrate, let's fix the shadows in this image. I'll click the Preset button. Next, under the High Dynamic Range category, I'll choose HDR Backlight Correction. As you can see, while it did the job and brightened the shadows, the result looks overdone. The good news is, it only takes one slider to fix this problem. I'll lower the Smart Lighting slider. And just like that, you get a pretty natural looking result. Here is another example using the HDR backlighting preset. So those are the four tools for correcting backlit images. Next, let's look at a slideshow comparison of edits I've done with each tool. At the end, I'll tell you which one is the best to fix backlit images. So I hope you enjoyed the slideshow comparison. As you can see, each tool does a solid job of fixing backlit photos. However, if I had to choose, which one would I recommend as the best tool to use? In my view, I would say the best tool to use is the HDR backlighting preset. Not only is it much simpler to use, taking only one or two steps to achieve a good result, I find its results are pretty comparable to those using sophisticated local adjustment techniques. That being said, if for whatever reason the preset is not doing the job, 
I would say the second best alternative is the Luminosity Mask Tool for the reason that I find it takes less steps and is simpler to use than my third alternative, control line and control point combination to create a precise mask. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know which tool is your favorite for correcting backlit photos. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.